Anyone that's familiar with the oldest Anarchy server in Minecraft knows exactly what the players here are capable of. When you have a server with no rules and is nearly a decade old, there's going to be some conflict. The incursions. Seven of them have occurred since 2B2T began in 2010. Some were major success stories, others were total failures. What is an incursion? Well, think of it as a group of players coming together to take control of the server or to accomplish a goal. But it's a little more complicated than that. But don't worry, by the end of this video, you will completely understand. We'll discuss the history of each of the seven incursions and also discuss what may happen in the future in regards to them. There's a lot to cover today, so let's get started. The incursions are split into two separate eras. One through three are considered the classic incursions. These incursions happened before the influence of YouTube on 2B2T, meaning that there is very little footage of these events, only screenshots. Four through seven are considered the modern incursions. These incursions were much larger in pretty much every regard and were mostly the result of YouTube influence. Because of this, there are countless hours of footage from all of these conflicts. Each incursion taught the 2B2T community a lesson in one way or another, and all seven lessons will be mentioned after their respective incursions. Starting with... Let me bring you back to the year 2013. There was a group of players on 2B2T from a base called Valkyria. These players decided one day that they wanted to travel to spawn in order to do something that an organized group had never done before. Take control of the wasteland at 0-0. A spawn invasion. The Valkyrians set up camp at 2K2K, the last remaining city from the Face Punch era, and used it as a base of operations in order to control spawn. Being so close, the group was able to do regular patrols, killing any players that stood in their way and befriending some of the more advanced players they encountered. Housemaster, the admin of 2B2T, had recently flattened spawn in an attempt to eliminate lag, so the patrols had a very large area to work with. The Valkyrians called it the spawn invasion, and it lasted only a week. That's right, the term incursion had not been invented yet, as the term would be applied to this event retroactively at a later date. While the members of Valkyria had fun with their little invasion, they realized just how challenging a spawn occupation actually was, and the leader of the group, Sato86, felt that the invasion wasn't exactly a success. It had failed to accomplish its goal. The first incursion may have been a failure, but it showed that players could band together on a server with no rules to try and accomplish something. If only they had greater numbers. But the lesson learned from the first incursion was that lacking objectives and goals would make players disorganized and they would lose interest in a community event very quickly. A few months later, a post about 2B2T went viral on the Minecraft subreddit and at the same time an IGN video was released about 2B2T, which caused a new wave of players to join the server. At the time, it was considered enough new players for the members of Valkyria to once again call for a spawn invasion. Remembering what they had learned from the previous invasion, they brought more members and had pre-planned goals. These included rebuilding spawn roads, protecting the NFE spawn base, protecting other structures such as spawn beacons, and of course, 
killing the invading new players. This spawn invasion lasted two months, much longer than the original. Overall, this second spawn invasion was considered a success and the first true takeover of 2B2T spawn region. The lesson learned from the second incursion was that having goals helped maintain player presence at spawn and kept them busy with their own tasks. It cemented the path for goal-driven incursions in the future. However, two months was too long for an incursion and it led to the exhaustion of the players involved. It would be another two years before the community came together again for another incursion. In 2015, after the largest base on the server at the time, Asgard 2, was griefed, the community of nearly 30 players living together were upset and needed to take their anger out on something. Many of the base members were ex-members of Valkyria, and they decided that it was time for another incursion. The previous two spawn invasions were renamed to incursions, and the third incursion planning was well underway. But this time, things would change. The third incursion was different than the previous two for a few reasons. First, it was the first incursion to have a deadline. A deadline would ensure that the event did not go longer than one month, preventing player burnout. The first incursion to allow players from outside the Vulcrian Legion Circle. Many of the members of Asgard 2 were strong fighters, builders, and thinkers. It made sense to have them involved and it was the first incursion to have a community build project. It was decided that a community build project would help cement the incursion's takeover of spawn and give the members something to protect. What was the build? Wrath Outpost, a giant base made entirely out of obsidian. It took a couple of weeks to be fully completed, but once it was finished, it was the largest spawn base ever built. Since withers were disabled on 2B2T during much of 2015, it was almost impossible to grief. Incursion members patrolled the base round the clock, and using spawn eggs, ghasts were spawned in as aerial support to attack invaders. Using Wrath as the spawn outpost, the incursion had total control of spawn. It was a complete success, and after one month, the incursion came to a close. The lesson learned was that by setting a deadline, it gave the people involved a sense of urgency, which made all members more productive. It also allowed newer members a way to prove themselves and be useful. I'll always have a soft spot for the third incursion since it was the first one I was part of. The end of the third incursion marked the end of an era. The classic incursions had come and gone. Nearly a year later, the YouTube invasion of 2B2T would begin, and with it, a new era of incursions. When the Camping Rusher made his now famous video about 2B2T, his fans flooded the server in magnitudes never before seen. His fans were called the Rushers, and began rushing 2B2T. The old player base was completely outnumbered, and had no choice but to either fight back or quit. The Rusher War was inevitable. I started the Team Veteran Initiative in order to rally some of the old players and also convert new players to our side, while Sato and the other old incursion members began organizing in case a new incursion had to be called. We tricked the incoming players into fighting each other under the guise of Team Veteran versus Team Rusher while many of us were fighting on the front lines at spawn every day, it just wasn't enough. There were just too many new players. While we were able to dispose of most diamond rushers with relative ease, a group of new players began to rise to power seemingly out of nowhere. They called themselves the Resistance. They were a team of rushers that were far more skilled in combat than any of the other new players. They had legitimate PvP background and fought in teams, outnumbering lone veterans they came across. They managed to defeat some of the old players by catching them off guard, including Burnsy and Sado. The new players were overwhelming, 2B2T culture was not being respected, and now, long-time players were being singled out and attacked. 
That was the final straw. The old community came together again, and the fourth incursion truly began. For the first time, the incursion was willing to take in new players if they had something useful to contribute or had certain skills, such as Bass DVC's bomber airships or San Wukan's lag machines. By using social engineering, hacking, and brute force, all resistance supply stashes were wiped out, and in July of 2016, late one summer evening, the incursion banded together and carried out a raid on the resistance's main base. The place was a crater by the time the incursion had finished destroying everything. In the weeks leading up to my duel with the Camping Rusher, the fourth incursion continued to fight at spawn, weakening the resistance and continuing to kill rushers. While this was happening though, a new form of combat was emerging. Crystal combat. End crystal explosions were so powerful that they could kill any player with only one or two explosions, even with god apples. This effectively turned traditional PvP battles into kamikaze runs. None of the sides were prepared for this kind of change in the combat meta, and the incursion began having trouble maintaining control of spawn. A few days after I won my duel against the camping rusher, both sides of the conflict re-geared for one final confrontation at spawn. This would be the last true battle of the Russia War. Corrupted Unicorn, the leader of the Resistance, unexpectedly switched sides before the battle and was ready to fight alongside the incursion. Both sides met near spawn and began fighting. Some end crystals were used, but the majority of the combatants used traditional weapons. The battle lasted almost an entire hour and ended with Rusher and company fleeing the battle, but still surviving. This would go down as the last major battle in 2B2T history that still used traditional PvP weapons. Summer came to a close, and the war on 2B2T was finally over. The members of the fourth incursion went their separate ways. The incursion was a success, and the lesson learned was that adapting to server change was crucial for keeping a player movement alive, and allowing some new players to join the incursions made them stronger and more diverse. Once the war ended, numerous groups and factions sprang up after both Team Veteran and Team Rusher had been dissolved. These groups attempted to gain as many members as possible, and began fighting for control of the 2B2T community. During this time of struggle, one of the most overpowered duplication exploits in 2B2T history became public. The server was falling even deeper into chaos. A player named Jared2013 attempted to use this chaos to his advantage. You're probably familiar with Jared if you've seen my video on how 2B2T almost died. Well, seemingly for no reason, Jared called for an incursion and started calling it the fifth incursion. At first, the community thought it was a joke, but he was serious. He had a goal of creating a large wall at spawn made entirely out of obsidian. Jared, however, ignored the lesson that had been learned during the fourth incursion and prevented all but his close friends from joining. This was a total disaster. It was a total bonehead move. There were not enough members of his incursion to actively build his wall, and many of the groups that were attempting to rise to power took the opportunity to destroy what was built of the wall for attention and for clout. One group in particular, Aurora, completely destroyed the fifth incursion wall single-handedly using withers. The incursion was a total disaster and to this day is still considered a joke. The lesson learned was one person alone cannot create an incursion. It requires multiple community leaders and compromises need to be made in order to have enough people to accomplish the goals. More than a year would pass without any sort of incursion or major YouTuber invasion. But on April 1st, 2018, popular YouTuber Ant Venom made a much anticipated video about 2B2T. Ant Venom had informed the community of his desire to make this video well before he actually released it, 
giving the community time to prepare for an invasion of Ant Venom fans, or ants, as they were referred to. The major groups that had survived the chaos of post-war 2B2T were now established forces on the server. While not entirely hostile towards each other, they weren't exactly allies. But the Ant Venom invasion changed that. The leaders of each group and many of the established community members all agreed. It was time for an incursion. By numbers, this incursion would be the largest ever, with hundreds of players all taking part. Management was evenly split between different community members, ensuring that no single person could be calling all of the shots. The wall idea was brought back, except this time, Thebes and Sound, 2B2T's greatest civil engineer, was brought on board to be in charge of getting the wall built. The major groups taking part in the incursion all lended members to help with the wall. Other community leaders such as Henry and Hermetic Lock all kept the groups in check, making sure that nobody overstepped their boundaries. Jared was kept on a tight leash to make sure he didn't ruin this incursion. Despite coming under attack from several anti-incursion groups, the wall continued to be built, and after one month of the incursion, the Ant Venom fans were killed, the wall was successfully built and defended, and the 2B2T community was united. The sixth incursion is regarded by some as the greatest of all time in how it completed a large-scale project that was thought to be impossible, ended up creating alliances between the ruling groups and factions, and overall, was fun. This incursion was a celebration of 2B2T, its culture and its players. Immediately following the incursion, there was relative peace on the server. But that wouldn't last long. Fast forward to the end of the summer of 2018, two years after the end of the Russia War. A large French YouTuber named Fuse Trois decides to make a series on 2B2T. Instantly, the community sprang into action, but this time, there had been no preparation. There had been zero warning. Still fatigued from having just finished an incursion months before, the community began to debate what should be done in this new incursion. This time around, Jared desired a much greater role in the incursion, and so forced his way into one of the positions of leadership. Right off the bat, the incursion already had a few problems. First off, Fuse's fans mainly played on the server while the majority of the North American players were sleeping, meaning it was easier for them to escape spawn. There was no actual enemy to fight. Secondly, the anti-incursion groups, still upset that they had failed to stop the sixth incursion, felt reinvigorated and attempted to thwart the incursion even harder. And finally, Jared was still not satisfied with his position in the incursion. He wanted total control, but he needed a reason to take control. And so he came up with a plan. First, he would convince newer incursion recruits that he was the true leader of the incursion. Then, he began using his privileges to kick players that he knew would stand in his way. He removed them under the guise of kicked for inactivity. If he noticed a player had been logged off the server or Discord for over 12 hours, and they were somebody he didn't like, he kicked them. He kicked out many of the previous Incursion members, and even kicked out some of the 2B2T YouTubers, myself included, since we were all well aware of his previous failures. By that point, I had already secured a duel with Fuse, so being kicked out didn't really bother me much. But from here, Jared began fabricating evidence claiming the other leaders of the incursion were attempting to kick him and take control for themselves. He was trying to turn all the leaders against each other. But the leaders, well aware of Jared's previous failures and constant plotting, saw past the schemes. Instead of trying to salvage a dying incursion, the leaders decided to let Jared have his incursion, and all withdrew support. They knew full well that with Jared in charge, history would repeat itself. With no enemy to fight and a power-hungry leader, the incursion fell into disarray, 
there weren't enough players to complete any of the planned projects, and the progress that was being made was easily undone by the anti-incursion groups. Previous groups that left the incursion had now become its targets. By the time I fought Fuse in our duel, the seventh incursion had collapsed into itself. The community was left appalled and disappointed. For the first time ever, an incursion was defeated by a different group. Jared's seventh incursion became known as one of the most colossal failures in 2B2T history. It was such a disaster that Sato, the founder of incursions himself, said that the incursion name should be retired. That the name itself meant nothing anymore. The lesson learned here was that allowing unstable players into positions of leadership will weaken a group no matter how many precautions are taken, and that an incursion will fail without true community support. That brings us to the future of incursions. These days, the community is weary about the name incursion. It's meaningless now. It's a joke. The 2B2T community has grown so large that server-wide events are constantly happening without even being named at all. When 2B2T fell into the YouTube algorithm's favor again last month, and a new influx of players joined the server, four, count them, four different discords all popped up, all claiming to be the true eighth incursion. And of course, all of them run by new players who have never even been in an incursion before. Someone even started a ninth incursion as a meme. I think it's safe to say that the days of incursions are over. If the founder of Incursion says it's time to stop, maybe that's not such a bad idea. If the community ever comes back together for a common goal or cause again, it'll probably have some other name. That would be the smart thing to do. But what will that name be? Well, like anything on an Anarchy server, it's going to be hard to predict. Whew! That was a lot to cover in a short amount of time, and I did it all in one take! and I still barely scratched the surface of some of these events. But if you want to discover more of the decade-long history from the oldest Anarchy server in Minecraft, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram to get updates on when new 2B2T videos are being released. The era of incursions seems to be coming to an end. What will happen next on 2B2T? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Take it easy everyone! Stay alive out there.